Hello, everybody out there. My name is Jason Norton. I'm the pastor here at Kings Trail Cowboy Church, and I'm actually excited to do this little intro to the sermon um, because it's always a, a good thing to get your mind right and to get settled before you hear God's word. And speaking of God's word, I have a scripture for you. It's in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. It says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So when Jesus said, Will you come to me and find rest? He also said for you and I to learn from him. So in this sermon section, I pray that you learn the words of Jesus. I pray that you learn the word of God. And um, as you're listening, just remember that this is God's word. And his promise to you is faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So enjoy the message. Um, I pray it blesses you and not just you, but everything in your life. And uh, we'll see you at the end. Love you. Bye-bye. Well, some that morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's nest, you sure. I'll fly away. Well, I'll fly away, oh, glory, I'll fly away. Yeah, I want to 
sometimes, you know? Will you turn the gain down on the acoustic, please? Welcome to King's Trail Cowboy Church. Anybody's first time to ever be here? Just home folks, huh?
throughout my history Your faithfulness has walked beside me When our storms make way for spring Every season from where I'm standing
There's a grace when my heart is on the fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. And when I look at the space between where I used to be in this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the wall. There's a grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. And when I look at the space between where I used to be in this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire. Standing next to me, there was another in the waters, holding back the seas. Should I ever need remind of how I've been set free? There is a cross that bears a burden where another died for me. There is another in the fight. For dead beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore Should I fall in the space between What remains of me and this reckoning Either way I won't bound to the things of this world And I know I will never be
be another in the fire standing next to me there'll be another in the waters holding back the seas should i ever need reminding how good you've been to me Count the joy of every battle Because I know that's where you'll be I Count the joy of every battle Because I know that's where you'll be I count the joy of every battle Because I know that's where you'll be We weren't supposed to capo Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father. Oh, 
cross as you wait for a crown and tell the world of the treasure you found Oh, what a Savior Come on Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Muscle memory almost made me say good morning. <laughs> good evening. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for uh, keeping us grounded. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us how to stay focused on the things that matter. Lord, thank you for everybody that came. We pray for the ones that are not here. We pray for the ones that are listening online. Lord, I'm thankful that we can trust you in all things. Anybody in Christ is secured. Lord, share, help me share this as you shared it with me. May you always get the glory. May the saints be equipped in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Uh, probably two months ago, Pastor Dwayne passed around a hat at the leadership meeting and... Uh, put everybody's name in the hat for Wednesday and I asked him to put my name in there as well and I uh, hadn't preached on a Wednesday in a long time and so my Wednesday's tonight so <clears throat> last Wednesday jo Brother Joey was preaching and um, I remember is at the beginning of the service everybody's kind of still walking around greeting each other and, and I remembered that I have next Wednesday and immediately I just said in my heart, Lord, what do you want me, want me to talk about? What do you want me to preach on? And I heard that word, remnant. And uh, I'm, I call them Christ crumbs. The Holy Ghost, if you're born again, the Holy Ghost will give you a word. He'll give you a word right now if you ask him. If you believe that he actually speak to you and trust in faith that whatever you heard in your head was him. If you're born again. And uh, so if you explore that further, he'll give you more of the word. And that's how you, I've learned to build a message as he gives it to me. Um, and then I, Tia makes the slides. And then I said, I told Tia, I said, I saw the word remnant in like a, an old antique font. And that's how weird I get. I, I'm to, to, the, to the letter, I want to do it how the Lord showed it. And because I, I don't, I mean, I'm not God. I just know that God has a purpose and everything. And then I saw some old timey guys shooting craps. And I was like, what's that about? I mean, you know, if you read Ezekiel, some of the old prophets in the Old Testament, you'll, you'll see that they saw some strange stuff. 
And, and I mean, sometimes you'll read the Old Testament and you're like, wow, how did they just go? Yes, Lord. And just went and did it. I need you to go over here. I need you to make some bread. I need you to cook it over a cow dung. He goes, Roger that. I'll go do that for you. I'm like, what? Some of this stuff. So just know that Holy Spirit will speak to you in pictures. He'll speak to you at times in just different things, obviously in the Word of God. And he said that'll be the last, the last part of the message is the gambling part. So if you would please turn to Isaiah chapter 10. The Lord even had me do my notes different tonight. <laughs> Maybe sometimes my comments are not for the congregation, but a preacher that is listening. Maybe for a preacher that is listening and doesn't realize they're a preacher yet. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So Isaiah chapter 10, starting at verse 20, it says the returning remnant of Israel. And I'm going to read to, from verse 20 to verse 34. And I want to, Lord willing, share with you what the Lord shared with me. It says in verse 20, Isaiah 10, 20, And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel, and such as have escaped of the house of Jacob, will never again depend on him who defeated them but will depend on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and truth. The remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob, to the mighty God. For though your people, O Israel, be as the sand of the sea, a remnant of them will return. The destruction decreed shall overflow with righteousness, for the Lord God of hosts will make a determined end in the midst of all the land. Verse 24. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of hosts, O my people who dwell in Zion, do not be afraid of the Assyrian. He shall strike you with a rod and lift up his staff against you in the manner of Egypt for yet a very little while, and the indignation will cease, as will my anger and their destruction, and the Lord of hosts will stir up, everybody say stir up, a scourge for him like the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. As his rod was on the sea, so will he lift it up in the manner of Egypt. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. Did you hear that? That is key. He has come to, y'all forgive me as I try to pronounce these Old Testament places, he has come to Aath, he has passed Migron at Michmash, he has attended to his equipment. They have gone along the ridge, they have taken up lodging at Geba, Ramah is afraid, Gibeah of Saul has fled. Lift up your voice, O daughter of Galim, cause it to be heard as far as Laish, O poor Anathoth. Madmina has fled, the inhabitants of Geban seek refuge. As yet he will remain at Nob that day. He will shake his fist at the mount of the daughter of Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. Behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, will lop off the bow with terror. Those of high stature will be honed down, and the haughty will be humbled. He will cut down the thickets of the forest with iron, and Lebanon will fall by the mighty one. Jesus... I thank you for taking me into deeper waters. I thank you, Lord, for moving from milk to meat at times in messages. I thank you, Lord, for messages that begin to make me nervous and causes me to call out to you more. And, Lord, I pray that I represent you well tonight. I pray that I explain this in a way that's understandable. Again, may you always get the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Now, at this time, in the context of this reading, Israel is about to be judged by God because they had strayed away from God and they started doing everything that God told them not to do, they started doing. And judgment was about to come upon Israel. And he's explaining, as this starts to come upon Israel, that he will leave a remnant. He will call a remnant back to him. And I love what it says is right here. It says that when he calls them back, 
that they will depend on the Holy One and on Him alone. And what he started to share with me was, we go through a hard time, or we go through some bad behavior. We'll go through misbehaving. Anybody ever misbehaved in here? Praise the Lord. Honest people in church tonight. We go through a, a, maybe a season of misbehaving. We go through a season of not acting right or not acting what the Holy Spirit has prompted you to behave like. And then he warns you. He warns you. How many know a loving God will warn you before judgment comes? Amen. He warns through the prophets. He warns even through preachers and evangelists today and through even the prompting of the Holy Spirit will warn you if you start to get out of line. Anybody want to be honest enough to raise your hand? You're about to just explode on something. You're about to do something wrong. And Holy Spirit goes, eh. <laughs> Amen. But this is the part I love. But after that judgment, after maybe that even discipline, maybe after that time of uh, sorrow, you know, the Bible talks about two sorrows, a fleshy sorrow that is torment, and then a sorrow that leads to repentance. And then there will be a remnant that's left. And what is left, he will use. Before I turn into a crybaby, let me give you a few carnal examples. If you take a very large person and then begin to consistently, with great discipline, cause them to work out, I can assure you their physical body will gripe and whine and want to quit. Amen? Their body will even begin to feel like it may die. But after time and discipline and consistency, guess what's left over? A strong body. What remains is a strong body. And you can use a strong body. Another one, that, another example, y'all, this is where, you know, everybody's got their own testimony. Everybody's got their own families. The Lord shared, reminded me of this story. My dad told me my dad was of the time period where they had rumbles. Anybody know what a rumble is? They literally would have, my dad used to, back in the day, day, he was actually in a gang when they had leather jackets. Y'all seen old movies where they wear leather jackets and they slick back their hair and all that stuff? Yeah, yeah. Well, he was telling me that one time they were part of a gang and they were going to meet at another parking lot to fight another gang. It's back when they just fought and that was it. Nobody killed each other. Nobody shot each other. They just threw down and probably went and had burgers with each other. But he said as they showed up, he had two cars behind him full of their people. And he said he pulled in this parking lot, and the entire parking lot was full of the other leather jackets. He said it was like a sea of leather jackets just opened up and then closed in right behind them as they pulled in. And my dad said he looked at his other buddy and says, well, I guess we'll probably get whooped tonight, but here we go. He gets out with two of his buddies the president of that gang, they actually used to meet the leadership first before they throw down. It was, I mean, I'm sitting there going, are you serious? None of that happens anymore. And um, they met, and he says, where's your other guys? He says, well, I guess they didn't show up. He said, well, we admire courage, and walked him over to his trunk. He says, you want to take off that leather jacket and put on one of ours? We'll go get them. Why, why am I saying this in church? Because courage, during a hard time, a scary time, paid off. And because three remnant people of that one got rewarded with not getting whooped at all. And I've seen this my entire life. Even in the military, you start off with a whole bunch of people. And as you go on and things get harder, you look up and you turn around and not too many people are left. And that is the Christian journey. God will allow you to go through certain things and he's going to allow you to experience certain things and by God's grace, everybody say God's grace. God's this grace. is not something you white knuckle. I gave two carnal explanations, but how we know that the apostle Peter responded in a fleshy way, he said, I will not deny you. I'll go to jail for you. I'll die for you. And he, he was the first one to ran off. This is not something you can white knuckle through, cultural through, just try harder through. 
You, the only way you recite, uh, survive to the remnant is if by God's grace. If God shows grace on your life, then you'll survive to the rem remnant. And you're, you're going to lose things that over time. You're going to lose friends. You're going to lose family. You're going to lose church members. You're going to lose close people to you that you thought would never leave. And they're going to leave your life. You're going to experience some things in life. And guess what? It is going to be gut-wrenching. But if by God's grace, if you just hold on to him, I believe that's why he said in Ephesians 6, when you've done all, stand. You stand when you don't. You, you're like, I, I've done everything I can think and do. I can, I've done everything that I, I, I received counseling to do. I, I did what Brother Jason said. I did what this guy said. I did what my mama said or my daddy or my papa said. I did every, I don't know what else to do. Stand. Because if you stand in that moment... You're going to survive to the remnant, and this is what I heard last Wednesday, remnant rewards. How many of you know there's blessings in longevity? There's blessings if you stay put. I'm, this is not no manipulative message trying to get people to stay at King's Trail. No, I, if anybody hangs out with me a while knows that I'm not that preacher. But I'm telling you the truth. If you ask God for strength, grace, and mercy upon your life to stand when everybody else runs off, you will be blessed. You will be blessed every single time. So turn to John chapter 6. We'll go over a few examples of that. John chapter 6. Verse 60. Many disciples turn away. There's a scripture that every once in a while the Holy Spirit will remind me of. It says, be careful. If you think you stand, it says, if you think you stand, beware, at least you fall. So one of the greatest times to be careful in your Christian walk is when you start to have this feeling, I think I've got this kind of figured out now. Read my Bible. Go to church. Be nice. And if I hear that Holy Spirit say something to me, do the best I can. As you start to think that way, look out. Because you're about to get promoted, what I would be told, you're about to get promoted through a butt whooping. <laughs> Amen. We're going to learn some stuff tonight, praise God. And it will encourage you because when you hit that low moment, when you hit that valley of the shadow of death, you know, all his praise and worship at the end of Psalm, was at the end of Psalm 23. It's not coincident that it's after they went through the valley after you go through the valley you will accidentally praise 10 times more than you did on purpose as a religious christian before you even seen a valley john chapter 6 verse 60 therefore many of his disciples when they heard this said this is a hard saying who can understand it how many times have you heard a message or something and it's hard for you to understand and you have this mindset or personality saying, I cannot obey something that I don't understand. Well, then you don't understand faith. Amen. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? Man, if, if, if offense runs you off, get ready. Get ready. As soon as the devil can figure out all I got to do is make you mad or hurt your feelings and you're gone, I, I'm sure the devil somewhere got that little red button that goes, that was easy. <laughs> Just make them mad. He said, does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. You can follow Jesus and not believe what he's saying. Chew on that one for a little bit. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. And he said, therefore I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my father. From that time many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, do you also want to go away? <laughs> Let me say this. 
And I'll conclude, at least that says scriptures of what Peter said. There will be times in your Christian walk that you will want to go back to your Egypt. You will. You'll even negotiate it through. You'll say everything that you need to say, and it'll make sense to you. But I'm telling you, the Bible's telling you, if you stay put, if you stand, and and many people don't like this terminology, but I'm going to prove it in the Scriptures. You will be promoted in the Spirit. The Bible says this. Many people are like, there's not levels of Christianity. In In the manner in which you said it, yes, that is true. But in the manner in which Jesus said it in a parable, it is not true. Let me explain. He says, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few. Now I'll put you in charge of five cities. The very next servant, he said, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been found faithful with a little. I now put you in charge of ten cities. Did not in the old Jethro's advice in the Old Testament of Moses, he said, find from you faithful men among you. Put them in charge of tens, fifties, hundreds, and thousands. Let them deal with the harder issue, or the lesser issues, and then you still deal with the harder issues. There's not levels in Christianity, but there is, Lord, help me explain this correctly. If you have been found faithful through trial and trial and trial, there is promotion and anointing. There is promotion and anointing. And he says this right here in verse 68, But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe, we have come to believe, and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve, and one of you is a devil? Let me ask you something. You wanted to see how mature your Christianity is? Know that there's a devil present. Know that there's one present that will betray you and love them anyway. Wow. Wow. That's a whole nother deal, huh? He spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for it was he who would betray him, being one of the twelve. And right up the up, up top, verse 69, he says, Also we have come to believe that and know that you are the Christ. And the Lord reminded me of the scripture this evening, this afternoon rather. He says, For this cause a man shall leave his father and mother and become one with his wife. Right? Become. It didn't say immediately you are one. It said become. And most people don't want to last through the becoming part. And if that is a model of marriage, and the church is the bride of Christ, and Jesus is the bridegroom, it takes time in certain areas of this marriage that we become one. How I many you know he don't have to become nothing because he is the great I am, right? It's all the becoming is now on our end with his help. So it takes time to learn this stuff. It takes time in this sanctification process. And he kept showing me over and over, there's a, there's a hard time, there's a standing season, and then there is a remnant. And by God's grace, you last, you stand, you stay put. And you know when it's about to be over is when you feel like you're probably about to lose your mind. It's about to be over. Prove it in Galatians chapter 6. He will raise you up in due time. If, everybody say if, if If you don't lose heart. But if you lose heart, you miss something. You stand. You stand of obedience. You stand. If you believe that, say amen. amen. So the question is, are you willing to survive through the remnant to hear a truth you don't understand? Are you willing to listen to a message someday, one day, That does nothing but hurt your feelings and make you mad, but yet you stay anyway. I'm not talking about King's Trail. I'm talking about people walking away from Christ. Are you willing to stand anyway? You know, one thing that blessed my heart, and i got to be careful how I say this. I had two or three people came up to me after we went through certain experiences And then another issue popped up, a very hard issue, a very hard issue for King's Trail. And I had these people come up to me, and they said this right here. We ain't leaving. What do you want us to do? We ain't leaving. What do you want us to do? Do you know that took 12 years of becoming friends and family in Christ? That took over a decade 
for us to trust each other that much. So just come in a few times or just, I don't know how to fully explain this other than it takes time. There's things that take time to be coming. I'm still, guys, y'all may laugh at this, but I don't care. 18 years with my bride, and I'm still learning things about her. How I many you know, raise your hand if you change over the, over, over the years. You yourself change. Yeah. I'm telling you, first 18 years of my life with my wife, I saw her eat a hot dog last weekend, and she made me nervous. <laughs> my wife, she used to act towards hot dogs like it was just poison. And I looked over at the picnic table at Leg Takes Oma, and she's down in a hot dog. And I was like, should I be worried about something? Is something triggered in you that you're like, you're done. I'm eating hot dogs now. She's like, nope, I'm just hungry. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Amen. Turn to John chapter 15. It takes time on the becoming. But if you, if you ask God for grace in those moments, because if you think you can survive with your strength, your wisdom, your experience in life, your intellect, he is so loving, he'll let you see how that's going to fail. I'm telling you, the only difference between a brand new believer and an elder is that elder immediately goes to Jesus. There's no way around it. Immediately an elder will go. They'll be halfway through their story and they'll just go, give me a hand. Lord, why? Because they've learned over the becoming seasons of their life it just it just handles so much better if we just go straight to Jesus and ask him for help that's why he's called the helper amen John chapter 15 verse 1 he said I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch that bears fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit you are already clean because of the word, praise Jesus, which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. The pruning process. <laughs> he, he's the vine dresser. He says what goes and what stays. He says what needs to be cut off and what stays. And how many of you know that if you're in this becoming season and he says, that's enough of that. And it could make no sense to you, but he'll remove it from your life. What remains after that is the remnant. And the remnant will bear fruit. Does this make sense? So here's the question. Are you willing to withstand a pruning process? Are you willing, church, everybody please look up here, please, in Jesus' name. Are you willing to be corrected? Are you willing to go through a rough patch? Are you willing to just trust God? Are you willing for him to take something away from you that you really love? It's a pruning process. But what remains, he uses for great things. He said, by this, my father is honored that you bear much fruit. The only way you do that is you become part of the remnant. Amen. And you survive through the pruning process. I can't imagine looking back on my, on my Christian walk, how many times I walked away from something and he was just pruning me. It was about to get better if I would have just stayed. But I got my feelings hurt or I got angry and I got something, fill in the blank. We all have our flavor of I'm done. And if I'd have just stayed put, I'd have learned something. Amen. Matter of fact, I'm thankful that the military, if you didn't stay put, they threw you in jail. And there was times that if they did not have that over my head, I'd have left. Amen. You know, the Bible says that you're a soldier of Christ. 
Soldiers go through training. You ready for this? What's the difference between training and teaching? Training's hard. Training don't care about your feelings, don't care about the environment in which you're training in. And training is repetitive. This makes no sense. Why am I doing this again? That's exactly right. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, please. Yep, it becomes second nature. I still, still, still to this day, let's see. Wait, okay. 23 years later, recognizing that I volunteered as a ranger, fully knowing the hazards of my chosen profession, I always endeavored to uphold the prestige, honor, and higher spirit corps, my ranger regiment. Go all the way through the Ranger Creed. Why? Because we said it every morning, every night. Matter of fact, there was a season that I was in a platoon. You couldn't go eat without saying it. And if you messed up, you went to the end of the line. Imagine if we treated the Word of God like that. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. Grace to you. Here's some encouragement. If you survive by God's grace to the remnant. You're, God's going to use you to help somebody that's going through what you just went through. Amen. So if you don't want to do it for yourself, do it for somebody that's watching. Yeah. Do it for somebody that you don't even realize needs it yet, but you love them and you want them to learn it too. Verse 3, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus that you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance. I'm not on the right page. <laughs> Second Corinthians, I was at First Corinthians. Maybe I'm being pruned. Y'all don't leave just yet. I was like, that not, doesn't sound like what I read earlier. Thank you, Lord. Verse 3, <laughs> comfort in suffering. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Am I on the right one now? Yes. Amen. The Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation. What for? That we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Translation. You're going through an issue. See, I'm about to make some of you nervous, but just hold on. Some of you go through something, and somebody is praying for you, praying with you, talking to you, helping you, giving you scriptural advice, discipling you, loving you, living life with you, and it's not just to help you. It's so that you can then turn around and help people that is going through what you just went through. And then what? how do I help those people? It's my first time. You do what they did for you. Sometimes you just be an ear. You just be available. Sometimes you're, the Lord will say, grab their hand and just pray. Sometimes it's come hang out with us. It's whatever it is. But the same, and guess where we learn that? Somebody did it for us. How did they learn it? Somebody did it for them. But if we can't survive into the remnant and we just take off running and quit, yeah, how many know about the wandering in the wilderness for 40 years? Around this mountain one more time. It said something like it would take normally 15 days, took 40 years. Why? Well, one, because God said it would. But two, they didn't have to if they were just obedient the first time. I, and that makes me wonder how many times in my life has God said, look, we, it's time to move past this. It's time to move past this. But I, I, I was having fun throwing my fits. And the Lord's like, Okay, we'll do it again in two weeks, buddy. Right? This is true. This is how it works. Verse 5, For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Let me tell you the reward, the remnant reward. If you survive through that moment by the grace of God and you last to the remnant side, guess what? You're going to feel a peace of Christ. You're going to see why people praise differently. You know why they, they praise different? I used to be the guy. Y'all don't get mad at me. Can I just be honest in church? My goodness. 
I used to be the guy that sat down and would be mad if anybody praised other. This is about all you can get away with me. You did any more of that, you were making me mad. You're distracting, and I didn't like you. I love Jesus too, but you need to calm down. That's how I felt until I went through some valleys. And now I'm really wanting to jam out up here up front, but the only reason why I'm not is because it's going to freak y'all out. That's why I run off to Uganda at times, because I can dance all I want and nobody cares, right? You go through some pain and sufferings, and God sets you free. And you, you observe miracles with your own eyes. And you see when he said, you, you now read the scriptures, I'll make a way when there seems to be no way. When you witness that, you'll be like, man, I'm about to, I'm going to kick this pulpit off the stage. You're like, whoa, I got to calm down. Why? Because of that scripture right there. If you, if you just hold on, when you don't all stand through the trials, through a marriage, through a child relationship, through whatever you're going through or whatever you've been through, with Christ's help, by the power of the Holy Ghost, He will cause you to praise differently on accident on the other side. You'll do things totally different. And, it, and people will tell that it's genuine, it's sincere. I was sitting next to a guy on a plane. <laughs> he messed up and asked me a question about the Bible. I was like, well, I'm boy, you glad this is about a four-hour trip. I was like, I have a captive audience. He can't even get to, to the bathroom without climbing over me. And I got to talking, and maybe y'all have experienced this. I got to talking, and in about eight minutes into it, I realized I ain't let him respond yet. And I looked at him, I go, man, I'm sorry. I was just kind of sharing, trying, I know I answered the question, I'm sorry. He goes, no, man, this is what he said. I can tell you've been through some suffering. And I can tell your Lord saved you through it. He said that. Amen? So when you go through some suffering, when you go through this, and if you would just hold on to the other side on the remnant, you will have a, a peace that truly passes all understanding. And when you hear people talk ill of Jesus, an unbeliever, an atheist, agnostic, you're no longer angry with them. You're very sad for them. Because you know without a doubt you have been persuaded. What the Apostle Paul said. Let every man be convinced. Amen. And when God does that through experiences and the becoming phase, and you make it to that remnant, man, it, it just changes you. Now listen to this. It shows a pattern. Verse 6. Now if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation. So you start standing up and serving the Lord. Listen, it will intensify. There is going to be hard days. There is going to be times you are going to want to quit. Guess what? And it ain't got nothing to do with you. Got everything to do with those people you're looking over, praying over, helping, and assisting. So just know that. And why is God doing that now? Because he knows that he would not have moved you into that ministering part or leading part if you hadn't already allowed him to teach you how to do it on a personal level. I mean, you know, ministry starts with you first. True ministry is the overflow of what's going on in your life. And then if you're married, ministry goes on with it's overflowing in your marriage's life to the children, and, and it goes out from there. That's where it starts, and that's where it goes. Now, if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation, for your peace, and salvation, which is effective for enduring the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation, and our hope for you is steadfast. Why? Because God has shown you the pattern. You know, there's always a Calvary before there's a resurrection. You're always, I'm telling you, so many people quit on Friday because they can't have any hope for Sunday. That's in anything in life. Jobs, being a student. You pick a category in life. Everybody experiences. Why? Because those are kingdom dynamics. Those are laws that God set in motion and nobody can stop it. Ask a mama. That great joy didn't happen in the beginning. No, not with morning sickness it didn't. Right? It came at the end when she held her child. But what came before that? Amen. I believe that a church will go through great turmoil right before multiple salvations occur. 
the remnant, the point of that set of scriptures is the remnant will be able to minister easier because they've learned how to stand. Turn to John chapter 12. Is it okay if I might talk too much tonight? John chapter 12, verse 20. Obviously, you're not tied here. You can leave at any time, but and I don't ever think it's disrespectful. John chapter 12, verse 20. Now there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. And then they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn Andrew and Philip told Jesus. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly I say to you, man, I... You imagine hanging out with Jesus and he always says stuff like this? It just gets you thinking. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Why? Because Jesus set that pattern. That can be even in the moment. In the moment when you're provoked to anger, in the moment when you're provoked to wrath, or in the moment you're provoked to, because there's fighters and runners, you might be provoked to run off. If you would just stand and die to self in that moment, it's going to produce something in that. It would, something will shift. Something would have shift. When Jesus died, is, this is the, the picture he's given. When Jesus died, he was placed in the tomb or in the ground. He's called the seed of Abraham. He said, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it will produce much fruit. After Jesus died and raised again, he produced much fruit of salvation, yes? And so he set in motion a pattern. Y'all hear me out on this. When you die to self, you're not going to see immediate results. Why? Because the seed just went into the ground. Even a seed takes a time for you to see it manifest to where you can see it. Yes, you put a seed in the ground. It takes time to see if there's even this evidence of anything underneath the ground, right? It's the same in your Christian walk. When you die to self, this is not microwave Christianity. I, call it, I used to call it hot pocket Christianity. Dude, dude, 45 seconds, I got dinner. This is one of those things you die to self and you just stand for a while and you'll start seeing it produce fruit. What happens when an apple starts to die? What remains? The seeds. Y'all listen to this. This is powerful. You can count the seeds in an apple, but you can't count the apples in one seed. Why? Because it dies to self and falls to the ground. It produces much fruit. One seed can produce an entire tree. Are we listening? God, and all this entire Bible, God took something small, something little, something insignificant, small quantity, and he made a great thing with it. Gideon's 300. He's like, I got 32,000 war-trained killers. God said, you got too many. And he's like, why I got too many? Because you'll take credit for yourself. So he said, okay, tell them if any of them are afraid, go home. 10,000 went and left. He said, you still got too many. If you win, against 150,000, by the way, if you win, you'll still take credit of yourself. He now wounded it all the way down to 300. 300 soldiers. Why? Because he wanted to make it known that there's no way that could have happened unless God was involved in it. And sometimes we get cornered up in life circumstances to where you tried everything, she tried everything, everybody tried everything, and now when something happens, you go, that was God. That's why he allows us to get in these situations. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. And in every time I preach or teach and there's a topic. Obviously, I'm a topical preacher. But um, at the end of it, he always reminds me that he's the best at every topic. Jesus endured for you and I and all creation what only he could. He died for all men's sins. And he was the only one that could do that and remain. 
He's the only one that can remain, be the true remnant of that. And with that said, that there's, that's the only way we can remain. So a few questions for you. Or maybe declarations. Pray that you are part. This is where I really want you to pay attention, please. Pray that you are part of the remnant after truth is spoken and you don't understand it. There's temptation to walk out in that parking lot and go, yeah, can God correct me? <laughs> yeah, I can assure you. Amen. Pray that you are part of the remnant after the truth is spoken. Pray that you are part of the remnant after being pruned or corrected. Pray that you are part of the remnant after going through a valley. It's only by, I can't emphasize that enough. I don't want anybody to walk out here and accidentally think that I misconstrued or insinuated that you've got to try harder. You ain't got to try harder. Matter of fact, you try harder, you're going to fail faster. you got to surrender faster. you got to go to Jesus faster. you got to ask grace on your life more. It's by grace we grow. Pray that you're part of the remnant after dying to self. I'm going to read this last scripture. Y'all close your Bibles. I just want you to listen, please. Lord, help me. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 12, 25, if you want to write notes down. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape, I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about, they're talking about Jesus. For if they did not escape who refused him, who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he is promised, saying, Yes, once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken, as of things that are made that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. There's a few times during the COVID silliness that somebody would come up to me and say, how are you so freaking calm? I said, by the grace of God. Amen. By the grace of God. Why? I, I, I so wish... There's important, all messages are important if they're from the Word of God, led by the Holy Spirit. But there's some points in a message I wish I could just brand in everybody's hearts. The only, how many know we ain't done with this world yet? And there's going to be a whole lot more stuff come that will shake people up. Shake them into anger, wrath, fear, torment, fill in the blank. Anything that you don't like. It's, it, it's almost as if it's a t trying to, right? God is going to allow a shaking to happen, not just on earth, but in heaven also. And the only way you survive a shaking is if you're attached to the one who can't be shaken. I, I bet you, I don't know about y'all, but I bet you that during the entire thing we've experienced the last year and a half, two years, Jesus was never one time nervous nor afraid. Amen? Amen. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we, have served, we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. And this is where he helps me out. When I have been shaken, do you know that's a blessing? Do you know why? Because he's exposing what flesh in me is still alive. And if I was dead to self in that area, I wouldn't have been shaken in that area. Amen? The only way to be part of the remnant is to not be shaken. And the only way to not be shaken is to belong to the one who is able to shake heaven and earth. If you believe that, say amen. amen. May we stand, please. Remnant. Remnant. I just feel led to pray. Jesus, if there's any um, anybody that has started to lose hope, 
we pray that you restore hope. Lord, I pray that people don't tell me thank you for this message, but rather they receive the message as an encouraging word the next time they go through a hard patch. That they know that there is reward in the remnant. There's reward on the other side. Lord, they have many life experiences that would show this statement to be true. There's blessings in longevity. But Lord, we, we ask right now for your forgiveness for trying to do it ourselves. We ask, Lord, for your forgiveness to try to think of a witty way to survive through a situation. We ask, Lord, for forgiveness for trying to attempt anything other than coming to you and asking you for guidance, wisdom, strength, endurance, and help and grace. So, Lord, we repent and we just say we ask that you would help us in not just the next one but in all the future ones until we're home in glory. Lord, I pray for the marriages here tonight. I pray for all the marriages here at King's Trail. Lord, you said we're under shepherds here overseers of the flock who watch out for their souls. Lord, I pray that you would mightily encourage every marriage and help them last. May they both be fully convinced they can't do it without you. Jesus, any other relationships that are messed up, we ask that you would help that. Lord, sometimes our emotions will get to us. We'll talk ourselves into a valley. And Jesus, I just pray that you would increase our sensitivity to your presence. You would increase our sensitivity to your leading and guiding and prompting. And that you would give us the grace to trust you even more. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be part of the remnant because of what you did on Calvary. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 That's it. I love you all. Hello everybody again, uh, you just finished listening to the sermon today, and uh, I have another scripture, imagine that, uh, lots of God's word being poured into you today or tonight or however what time um, this message is reaching you, but in Mark chapter 4, verse 15, it talks about the parable of the sower and the seed, God's seed is God's word, and listen to this real quick, it says, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in your hearts. So since God's word has been sown in your heart during that message, it is our prayer that God solidifies that seed and protects it and watches over it and may it be watered. And just as God's word says, may he give the increase. And I pray he gives the increase of salvation in your life. And I need you to hear this real quick. I need you to pause what you're doing. I need you to listen. And I pray these words sink deep down into your soul. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So if you do, you do believe that to be true, then I pray that you, that you say this prayer. And you know what? You don't want to say it if you don't mean it, but, don't, but if you do believe it and you do mean it, then you need to confess it. You know, When, God, when the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached, it fills up your heart. And uh, you desire to be saved. So you just say a simple prayer like this. You say, Lord Jesus, I ask that you forgive me of all my sins. And I ask that you come into my life and be the boss of my life. Today I confess you as Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Be Lord of my life. And if you did that, your salvation is um, totally and completely secured. And I would encourage you to go tell somebody that you got saved today or tonight or whenever you heard this message. And I pray we see you again back at the sermon section. I pray you come and visit us in person if, uh, um, if you're around this local area. But either way, may God bless you, and we love you all in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.